This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can remove the white background from a photograph using Affinity Designer. So to get us started here in Affinity, the first thing we want to do is just close out of this menu, and then we'll open up our photograph by going to File, Open. And for this tutorial, I'll be using this example photo of a dog, so I'll double-click that to import it into Affinity. And since this is a rasterized photograph that's made of pixels rather than a vector design, we're going to want to work with the pixel persona for this tutorial. So to access that, we'll come up here to the top left portion of the screen with this little icon that's uh, comprised of some colored boxes and click on that. It should say pixel persona when you hover your cursor over it. Go ahead and click on that. So now we have the pixel tool set over here. So what we want to do first is remove the lock from the layer. So I'm going to right click on this layer over here and where it says lock, just make sure to go ahead and deselect that. If it's already deselected, then you're good to go. Otherwise, just go ahead and deselect it. And to remove this white background, what I'm going to do is use a tool over here known as the selection brush tool. You can access it by clicking on this icon over here or by pressing W on the keyboard. And up here in the settings, we want to make sure we have snap to edges selected and then soft edges selected as well. So if you bring your cursor onto the canvas here, you'll notice your cursor is now a circular brush and you can change the size of that brush by using the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. The right bracket key will make the brush bigger. The left bracket key will make it smaller. So for this tutorial, I wanna make my brush about this big. You could just eyeball it. You don't wanna make it too big, but then again, you don't wanna make it too small. So. A good medium size like that's pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting around the edges of the subject here. And if you notice, as I'm painting around the edges, it's placing a dotted line around the subject there. And it's being placed automatically. There's, it's using an algorithm to determine where the edges of the subject are. And if you notice, it's far from perfect. It's missing. It's bleeding into the subject here. But that's okay. We're going to go back and correct that in just a minute. So for now, let's just focus on painting around the subject here like this, creating a very, a very rudimentary outline going around it. Like that. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse like that. And I want to fill in the rest of this white area too. I want to get rid of the rest of this white area. But what we're really doing here is we're creating a selection around the white area. We're not creating a selection around the dog. It's actually the inverse of that. So let me get rid of the rest of this white area in here, move the edge of the selection out to the border there. You can make your brush a little bigger if you'd like. It'll help It'll help you do it a little quicker. And what we want to do now is correct the imperfections of this tracing. So let me bring the size of the brush down a little bit using the left bracket key. And then I want to zoom in on this area by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel like that. And to push back the border, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt and then click like that. And if you notice, as I do that, it's pushing the border back to the edges of the subject. Now I want to use a smaller, I want to make my brush a little smaller. So I'm going to use the left bracket key again, just to get a little more precision. Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. And again, to move the page, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. So what you want to do is just go through here and make these adjustments to your subject, as you see I'm doing here. Let me move this out to the edge like this. That's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Move this over here like that. And again, make sure you're holding Alt on the keyboard while you do this. If you're not holding Alt, it's going to move the selection in more like that. So let me just undo that by pressing Control Z. And now I'm just going to go through and make this selection a little more accurate. Okay, so once you're finished, what you could do is just hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom back out. As you can see, I have an outline going around the subject here. I just want to scan through this really quickly just for any missed imperfections here. If, I notice, if you notice over here, I missed a spot right here, so let me go and fix that. And it looks like I missed a spot up here as well, so let me go and fix that. Fix this little area as well. And that's, I'd say that's looking a lot better. One more little area right here. There we go, pretty good. Now what we want to do is open up the Refine menu over here with this button that says Refine. Go ahead and click on that and it's going to open up the Refine menu. And as you can see, it's going to apply a red mask going over the area that you've selected. Now what you can do is you can use this red mask as a reference to determine whether or not your tracing is accurate. Now if you look over here on my tracing, it looks pretty accurate. If yours doesn't look as accurate as mine, you can adjust it further by zooming in over here and painting it over some of the fine details like the hairs and stuff. 
If there's any stray hairs that aren't included, I'm trying to find one as an example here. Over here, we have some stray hairs that aren't included. You could just paint over that and it'll include them in there with that red area. And then you can also adjust some other settings over here like the border width. You can increase or decrease that. Mine looks pretty good by default, so I'm just going to leave it at 10%. Which is what it was previously and then you have some other settings you can play with over here like the smoothness and the filter and the ramp and so on and so forth mine looks pretty good as it is if yours doesn't just go ahead and play with these settings to see if you can get an accurate tracing like i have here then go ahead and click apply and once you've done that to get rid of the white background all you have to do now is just press delete on the keyboard and now it's gone so what we could do now is now that the the background's gone we can remove the selection by going to select deselect and all we have to do now is save our work or export it rather so to do that i'll come up here to where it says file i'll come over to, to where it says export you want to use export rather than save click on export and the format we want to export as if you notice here we have all of these different formats we want to use png the png format allows for transparent backgrounds if you use jpeg you're not going to have a transparent background because jpeg does not support transparency so if you export this as a jpeg you're probably going to end up with the white background again so use jpeg i mean use png click on export choose your folder where you want to save it i'm going to save it here in this folder here i'm just going to dog no background click save and I'm going to open up the folder on my other monitor over here and open up the file. And there you go. There is our subject. There is our, our photo with the white background removed. So that's how you can go about deleting a white background from a photograph using Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.